Hello, so today uh, we're going to be drawing Baloo the Bear from Disney. I wanted to show you guys how to draw a full-sized Baloo or a full-bodied <laughs> Baloo since uh, Baloo is going to be a little bit smaller on my screen. So I'm going to try and do a lot of this stuff while I'm talking so you guys can kind of see my process when I do this stuff. So of course I don't know how to draw Baloo from the top of my head and I have a little bit of reference with me at the moment and I'm going to be following that. So I'm going to show you guys how I go ahead and build a picture. So let's start out. Make sure you have what you want. I'm going to start with a pencil and let's see, make this a little bit bigger. I am drawing on the iPad because it's really nice to draw on the iPad. So I draw lightly when I'm drawing anything and then I go over it uh, and darken it up. So Baloo is a large bear, which is awesome. And as you can see, I am drawing really sketchy lines to kind of get the idea of where I want his body. His body is kind of just elongated, pear-shaped look. And we are going to start drawing the legs and everything. So everything right now is just going to look like sketchy lines, which is fine. Don't go really hard on this stuff because you're going to go over it afterwards. And of course you can draw this in any color that you want. And if you made this too big, like I did, you can resize it. Yay, Procreate. That's the nice thing with uh, digital drawings. So out of all the apps on the iPad, I've actually really liked Procreate a lot. I use Procreate and Sketchbook probably the most. Procreate just feels really natural when I'm working with it. And Sketchbook has a lot of stuff that I like. And especially the mirroring feature when you're drawing, it really, really helps when you're doing a lot of concept art. And you start kind of figuring out where you want that belly to go because I made him a little bit too skinny. Kind of want to figure out where the arms go. figure out where that joint's going to go. So I draw lines and I might make a little line that goes through the midsection and kind of figure out where his other arm's going to bend, where it's going to go and where it's going to bend. And he's got chunky little legs. You guys can kind of see the way I'm building up this character. Again, do light lines when you are establishing what the character looks like before going in and actually making the lines a lot darker. I've always drawn like this. That way I don't use the eraser as much, which is good. It's a good habit to get into. Don't rely on that eraser. Just do sketchy lines to kind of get everything where it's supposed to go. And then I'll go over it with a uh, different color so you guys can see it better.
Drawing on a digital surface is a little bit different than drawing on paper. It takes a little getting used to, especially if you've never done this. Because a lot of people have asked if drawing on the iPad feels the same or similar as drawing on paper. The simple answer is no. Nothing feels the same. And drawing on a device like this is not going to make you better. So if you haven't mastered drawing on paper, or at least gotten decent, don't get an iPad expecting that you're going to get better. It does make the workflow nicer in general when you already draw. And I do recommend it. It's kind of sad how little I use my uh, Wacom Decintiq that I have. It's almost to the point that I just kind of want to sell it because I use the iPad so much. It's become like my main art device, which is great. I just didn't expect it to do that because I thought it was too limited when I got it first. And then I wanted to go back to doing stuff on the computer. And then I didn't want to do stuff on the computer because I felt like I was too limited <laughs> because I was sitting down on the computer in front of the computer all the time. But it's just weird. You kind of go back and forth on, on things. So I am erasing this leg because this looks wrong. You can, of course, erase. I just try not to make that mistake right away. But if something feels wrong, redo it. kind of see it sort of taking shape. I've actually never drawn this character before. So I thought this was kind of a fun challenge to do characters that I never think about drawing. Even though I do like this character quite a bit. I think he's really cute. I think this break is too, too much. And I do think he is not long enough here. Baloo has a long neck, so this head is kind of not in the right place. Try to get his cute face in there. <clears throat> zoom in and of course you can move the canvas around the iPad allows you to do that extremely easy which is nice so for the face what I usually do is I'll zoom in and I will start doing the division lines so it helps me uh, where I want to put the eyes and where I want to put the muzzle and he's got small eyes compared to the rest of the the face because his muzzle is very heavy old bear face. So this is the first time I'm doing this narrated as I am drawing. So I've done some of the other videos before but I narrate after I've drawn which sometimes it's a little weird for me as I'm talking over a picture I already drew. So I thought that I would narrate and I would work on it at the same time because that way I can uh, concentrate on what I'm doing and then it doesn't feel as awkward after the fact. Just kind of continuing those sketchy lines. This area is going to get a little messy because it's a little hard to see what I'm doing because of the red and 
and all these uh, sketchy lines on top of it. But I will go over it and you guys will be able to see it a lot better. And we'll see if this guy ends up looking like blue. Which it sort of should. I already see him kind of popping out here in the picture. Gotta figure out where you're gonna put those eyebrows. He's got he's got cute cheeks that connect with his neck. I forgot how long of a neck this character had. But he is kind of like all neck and belly. His ears are actually a lot lower than I remembered. I think it's just you get used to drawing one way and then when you actually start to follow reference you realize that characters look different. Which is a good thing. This actually makes me pay more attention. I can reduce the pencil size a bit. So I can go in here and add a bit of detail. And he just has black and white eyes. So he's an old school Disney character. That's sort of ish looking like him already. ear in there. Pretty little ears. When I draw bears I put them high up but I actually like them low like this. It looks way cuter. And Baloo has hair. Hooray for hair. I really like hair on characters like I like eyebrows on characters. So he's got these thick little eyebrows right above his eyes. And then he's got a mop of hair. Look at that. It looks like a bear. Yeah, it's looking like blue. <laughs> you guys get to experience the first blue with me. some areas. The way I connected the neck, I kind of forgot to give it a little bit of a shoulder area, which is not good. So you go in and you add the little fuzzies. This is when you start refining things a little bit more. Like I hadn't done any of the claw fingers and I can go in and add that. And then he has like a division for his chest, which is pretty cute. And then a division for his belly color. I feel 
feel like he's leaning forward a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to grab part of him and I'm going to tilt him a little bit. So I can alter it a little bit. So he doesn't look like he's slouching. So of course it created these areas over here. We can go in and erase them a bit and then go over it. I'm going to make his belly a little bit bigger because I still think I made him too skinny. And I added too much of a division here. I made it go in too much and he's not he doesn't have a, a boob. I just have to make them all like one shape. There's a pair. It's weird when you draw often and you draw characters from your head and you're not paying attention to a lot of this reference. You kind of develop bad habits, which I, I regret to say I have a lot. And you think you know what a lot of these characters look like because your mind starts to assume you do. So it's good to look at reference. It doesn't matter if you know what the character looks like. It's good to just look at it. And then you pick up a lot of little things that you wouldn't have picked up before. I still do that a lot with real animals because you learn so much every single time that you're looking at photos. So it doesn't matter if you're drawing cartoony look at reference and then kind of develop a character from there because it doesn't matter if the character is realistic you gotta look at real photos to develop your cartoony character because your cartoony character is based on a real real animal especially if you're drawing of course animals and stuff when you're drawing things like mythical creatures like dragons and whatnot I still base a lot of dragons off of birds and uh, reptiles and amphibians and stuff. So they still have some bases in reality. And I would recommend looking at real animals anyways. That's why if you have like a zoo or a park or something like that. Like at a park, I go and see, like look at people and, and then I can draw the people. I used to do that a lot when I was in college. But... Even if you go to like the dog park and stuff and you sit down with your sketchbook, you learn a lot by just looking at other animals or looking at people interacting. Ugh, this foot looks wrong. And of course, if something doesn't look right, you can't erase it. No one's perfect. Go ahead and erase it and redo it. But... Hopefully uh, this has been pretty easy to follow, especially how I'm trying to get all the lines, the construction lines in there and then going in and then of course like adding the extra bits and stuff. And then I'm going to do the darker outline in a different layer. And this has been like the first time I've drawn this character. So this is, this is actually fun. sometimes the best thing to do is to draw something that you're not 100% used to. So I think, see sometimes these lines will cause issues when I'm looking at it. I think he's not wide enough in the chest. So let's, let's do some magical stuff too. We are going to grab his chest here and expand it a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better. And move it around. Oh yeah. So I do this a lot with digital stuff and I've seen a lot of people do this. It's okay, I mean, if you messed up, it's fine. If you had to reposition the character because of a problem here and there, that's okay too. It's just, it makes it so much easier than when you do it on paper because you have, of course, undo button and then you can go in there and use the transform and which is that tool that I was grabbing. 
Um, and then you can resize it and everything. And it just, it makes your life so much easier. So there are things with digital art that I'm very happy exist. And that one is one of them. Being able to resize things without having to redraw the whole thing. Yay for magic. Look at this. I think I'm curving that too much. I'm looking at some reference right now. And I wanted to follow it as much as I could. So I'm going to twist this thing upside down. Because sometimes you see a lot of glaring errors when you have it facing the other way. And with the iPad, you don't have to rotate the whole iPad. You can just rotate the picture. Which makes it even easier. So I wanted to kind of open this up for discussion, of course. Um, because it's a lot easier for me to ask you guys questions while I'm drawing. So what sort of characters would you guys like to see drawn in the future? Uh, be it Disney characters, non-Disney characters, animal characters, of course, not animal characters. I just kind of want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm, I probably, I'm going to get a lot of different stuff that I've never even heard of before, but that's okay. I like to draw stuff I'm not comfortable with sometimes such as people. I don't think I'm very good at it, but it's good to learn. And that's the other thing too this year. I wanted to make a promise to myself to start drawing things that are not the norm to see if I can learn a bit more. Because even though I've been drawing for a while, I still have a whole lot to learn. So if you mess up, it's okay. I mess up too, all the time. So see, I've gone darker with a lot of my lines, so I've gotten more comfortable. But I'm still not 100% sure with that arm. It just looks kind of dopey. So, hmm, maybe I'll just change it completely. I'm following a reference piece, but I kind of don't like it back there. I think it looks kind of silly. So maybe we can divide the arm. And make it bend inwards. So I can see. Where his hand is. I think it's because I've been <laughs> so weirded out since I was a kid about hiding arms behind characters' backs. Because in back in the day, when I had this horrible fear of hands, I would hide every character's hand behind its back or I'd put it in pockets. Which is usually the telltale sign of, I don't want to draw fingers because I don't know what I'm doing. So let's alter the pose slightly, which is fine. So this part here, I am actually just kind of going with what I think would work because now I have changed what I'm looking at on the reference because I wasn't loving that look. It just looked really boring. So let's change it. Because why not? Let's make it a little different. That's the other thing too. You should have fun with art. You learn so much. And then of course you can change more stuff. I use art to relax. And I mean, I, I do sell art as well. But I love doing this more for a relaxing thing more than having to get a bunch of pieces done for for money. I've always liked art for relaxing overall. So 
These feet are looking like dinosaur feet. <laughs> so I'm going to go back in. I'm going to redo this again. And this is one of those things, again, like, it's okay to redo it. I'm redoing it. Doesn't mean you have to redo it. If you're happy with the way you drew those feet, stick to them. I was unhappy. So I am redrawing them here. I started drawing back when I was a little kid and I think the first characters that I started drawing were Snoopy and Garfield because those were characters that I saw all the time and my dad used to draw them a lot so I wanted to learn how to draw these characters but I didn't fully get into drawing stuff until I was a little bit older but, I mean, not much older, since I'm not that old. Um, I started drawing characters when uh, Lion King came out. And then I realized, like, wow, these characters are actually really cool. And I would like to learn how to draw more of these characters. And, of course, Disney was a big influence in my life. And I came to Florida every summer. And I was uh, mesmerized by everything Disney. I grew up with a lot of Looney Tunes as well. So I drew a lot of like Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. And I learned a lot from artwork and just general everything when I came to cartoons because of that. Like I loved how cartoons just could do anything. And if you could draw these characters, I mean, you could create a whole other world of, of uh, personalities in a way. So if you had an idea in your head, you can make it come to life. And they were yours. You could you could do whatever. So I started drawing characters, like characters I had made up as a kid on uh, in sketchbooks and stuff. And my mom didn't know where these characters were coming from. And, and I had to explain to her they were all coming from my head. They were just made up. Which, I mean, I guess as a kid you kind of sound insane. But it's fun. It's just one of those things that if your mind starts to create these characters and you want to draw them, I mean, hey, more power to you. And and, uh, and it was just a way to keep uh, my mind occupied because I really like doing stuff with my hands. So when I started drawing, I kind of just continued drawing. And I remember people in school would ask me for art and I was all for it and I love drawing for people I still do I still really enjoy drawing for others but I mostly do this for myself just because I'm still learning a lot of stuff so it's it's there but I see even though after I stretched out the chest I think the stomach is still kind of small so I'm gonna go over bubble it out a little bit and get that out there there we go that looks much better and then move that arm we'll just leave this one kind of hiding back there because because that one looks fine back there and then like one finger showing off. So, as you can see, it looks a lot like blue. Hooray, look at that. Can't say it's perfect or anything, but hey, not bad for the first try. So hopefully you guys were able to follow along and learn a little bit from my sketching and of course my mistakes. And uh, as you can see, I still make a ton of mistakes when I'm drawing. I'm going to show you guys how this will look with a black outline so we can see it better. Now with uh, now drawing on top of this layer, it's a little smaller. I'm going to go over it with black. I'm just going to do it in pencil because I actually really like this pencil. I 
Oh, look at those eyes. Probably my favorite thing to draw in any piece of art are eyes. You mess up the eyes, you kill the picture. So sometimes you'll see me redo eyes a lot until I get the look that I want. Cute little smile in there. He's got a really cute smile. I think I, yeah, I closed his mouth too much. We can fix it. It's just bad habits from stuff that I've been doing on my own characters. It's weird that sometimes you think you see something when you're following reference and then you realize that it's just your mind and it's just a bad habit. You think you're seeing stuff, but you're not. So you have to... It's a weird thing, like they would tell me in school, like you have to see with your eyes and not with your mind because your mind is going to interpret it however it wants to interpret it. So if you tell me bear, I'm going to draw a generic bear, but then people are like, oh, draw Baloo, and then you kind of look at reference and you don't really follow it. It's not going to look like the character because you're seeing with your mind, you're like recalling what you thought you saw and unless you have like this amazing photographic memory where you remember everything <laughs> it's probably not going to look the same So now we're going over everything. Oops. And sometimes there are straight lines. This app's actually pretty good for putting your palm on the screen. The palm rejection for the iPad is actually fantastic. Because I know some people had asked me about that. Especially jumping from the Cintiq over to this. Um, at first, some of the programs were really buggy. But now that the iPad Pro has been out for a little bit and the Apple Pencil, it is actually really nice. So if you guys are considering getting a portable art tablet, look into the iPad Pro. It's actually really good. No, it's not a sponsored video, of course, <laughs> before somebody asks. I just really like this this device you know I like a lot of Apple stuff for sure but when they announced this device I really assumed it was going to be bad just because I was just a hundred percent welcome and I wouldn't change my mind and I thought there'd be no way anybody could replace them because a lot of stuff had come out in the past and said that it was going to and I realized that nothing even came close to it but then when this came out I went to test it at the Apple store and I fell in love with it. So I actually bought the the 12 inch one, the big one, the first one that came out. And I used that one quite a bit, but then I realized it wasn't really nice for traveling because it felt like I had a giant cookie sheet in my bag and it didn't really fit my purse. So I decided to sell that one and downgrade to the 9.7 and I am now on the 10 because I sold the other one as well because I wanted more space because the 9.7 was more than, than enough. I have the 10 inch one now and that one is great. I have zero complaints with this one and I decided to get the bigger space the 256 because if I am recording on my screen like I'm doing currently, it's good to have a bit more space. 
So I'm quickly going over all this stuff so you guys can see what this bear looks like. Look at that. So yeah, this is all just quick so you can see the difference. Of what it looks like with a little bit of black. So your eyes can focus on the dark lines instead of the light lines. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Of course, if you would like to see specific things, if you'd like me to stay more quiet, <laughs> I can also do that. Because um, the way that I had done these tutorials before was pretty much posting a sort of time lapse and then slowing it down and uh, just leaving music up there because sometimes I don't know if I'm being annoying or if you guys even care to uh, hear narration at all for these. But I can do a combination of both. Not everything has to be, of course, narrated. But then this way you guys can sort of see how my mind <laughs> works as I'm going through it. I mean, you guys don't get to hear like the cursing and stuff that happens behind the scenes. But sometimes it happens. Sometimes you get so frustrated with something, you just turn off the program and then you just want to deal with it tomorrow. But not, not bad. Not bad. I mean, it, it looks enough like the character. <laughs> it's, it's a blue. So let's uh, shade in his nose. A little dark nose. So if you ended up uh, doing this mini step-by-step -step or draw with me tutorial, um, be sure to share your picture. I would love to see it. I'm going to link my Twitter on here. And if you guys have Twitter, uh, find me on Twitter at me, at Latin Vixen, and uh, show me your bear. I want to see your Baloo. Baloo-inspired bear. I'm very curious. Because I already did a cat tutorial, and somebody drew it already, which was great. I get really excited when you guys show me if you've been following the tutorials at all. So I hope this has helped people. I'm trying to do a bunch of these at least once a week. And then that way... I can get better at the stuff that I'm doing. I can get better at making these videos as well because I like doing these for you guys. I really enjoy helping people when it comes to art and stuff because I learned a lot about art because of art books and tutorials online and talking to artists and everything and of course in school. And uh, I hope to help you guys as well because this is actually super fun. So yeah, I mean... Like I said, hopefully this was good and uh, I will be drawing some more next week. Not sure exactly what characters yet, but if you have any suggestions, make sure you leave a comment in the section below. And this is Baloo. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye.